In this video, I want to address the absolute value function. The absolute value function is one that we uh, denote by using vertical bars around something. Um, I generally think of the absolute value function as a positive making machine. So it takes whatever value is inside and turns it positive. So for example, if you had a symbol expression written like this, where the absolute value of negative 5, the answer would be 5 because it takes whatever value is inside and turns it positive. If we had something, um, for example, with the absolute value of 6, it's already positive, so it just stays that way. Um, so whatever value is inside becomes positive as we go out. Now, if we think about the absolute value then in terms of um, an equation, what this means is that there's more than one possible answer in many cases. So for example, if we look at the absolute value of x equal to 5, we actually have two possible values of x that would make this statement true. We can, if we take what's inside, that x can be positive 5, or if we take what's inside, that x could be a negative 5, because that inside value here could be have already been positive and stay positive, or it could have been negative inside, and then when you take the absolute value symbol, or take the absolute value of that, then we'd be get back positive 5. So when we think of absolute value, we actually do have a pair of cases that we need to worry about. On the flip side, when we're dealing with absolute value, we also have some other things that we need to worry about, and that's problems like number 8. While not immediately apparent, when we look at this problem, notice that here we are taking the absolute value and getting a negative result. This can't happen because the absolute value function takes whatever's inside and turns it positive. So we can't take the absolute value of something and get a negative solution. So in this case, there are no solutions and we can use the math set symbol with the zero with the line through it to indicate that there are no values of x for which the absolute value of x is equal to negative 5 because that's not what the absolute value does. All right, so kind of with that review in the, in the background here, let's think a little bit about what's going to happen when we are looking at absolute values with um, inequalities. So in number 9 here, we're looking at how can we describe the set where the absolute value of x is less than 5? Now, if we think in terms of taking what's inside and this being a positive making machine, if x is already positive, then x can be less than 5. Or, if we take what's inside x and make that negative, then we've kind of changed something in terms of our equation. So here we broke it out with x is equal to 5 and x is equal to negative 5. Here when we break out x is less than 5, when we look at the negative version of it, we've, we are going to have to switch the direction of our inequality. So here x has to be less than 5 and x also has to be greater than negative 5. If we think about that in terms of a number line, what we're looking at is the values between negative 5 and 5. And consider what kind of numbers this would be. For example, if we put in numbers like 1, 2, or 3, when we take the absolute value, we get 1, 2, and 3, which is less than 5. If we take values like negative 1, negative 2, or negative 3, when we take the absolute value, we get positive 1, 2, and 3, which is less than 5. So we're looking at these values in between here. And again, we use open circles because it's a strictly less than symbol. Um, if we're looking at a case where we want the absolute value to be greater than 5, keep in mind that if what's inside that x is positive, we are looking at values where x is greater than or equal to 5. On the flip side, if we're looking at what's inside being a negative condition, because we're kind of doing this opposite condition piece, we have to switch the direction of our inequality. So in this case, we're looking for values where x is greater than or equal to positive 5. So we want all these big positive values because that will work. And what we need here on the flip side is all these big negative valued numbers so that, for example, if we have 
the absolute value of negative 10, we get positive 10, which is greater than or equal to 5. So we want all of the 5, 6, 7s, and 8s, but we also want the negative 5s, negative 6s, negative 7s, and negative 8s on the, on the bottom end. And so in these cases, with greater than or equal to with absolute value, we get kind of this split um, answer. With less thans, we get kind of this sandwiched in between type of an answer. But it comes back to this idea of having both whatever's inside that absolute value could have been positive or negative to start with, but when you take the absolute value, you end up with those positive values on the other side. Again, we're not really going to do a lot with that in this class, but wanted to point out a little bit how um, that absolute value function will create separate cases when we're talking about inequalities.